Hi, welcome to today's lesson. Today's learning target is I understand decimal place value basics. So today we're going to learn from Rob and me all about decimal place value from the tenths place to the thousandths place. We're going to watch this math antics video together and I'm going to stop every so often to talk a little bit more about the things Rob is teaching. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. In this video, we're going to learn about decimal place value. As that name suggests, it's related to regular place value. So be sure to watch our video about that if you haven't already. We have watched that video way back at the beginning of the year. Place value is just what Rob is about to review. Let's listen carefully. In a previous video, we learned how to count using just 10 different digits and number places that represent different size groups. For example, if we needed to count 235 apples, we use different number places for counting by ones, by groups of 10, and by groups of 100. The digit two in the hundreds place represents two hundreds. The three in the tens place represents three tens, or 30. And the five in the ones place represents five ones, or just five. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Place value. It's a pretty amazing system if you think about it. It only has 10 digits, but those digits can be reused in different combinations to count any number from zero all the way to trillions of apples and beyond. But as amazing as it is, there's just one little problem with our number system so far. Can you guess what it is? Let's find out if your guess is correct. What if you don't have a whole apple? In the place value video, we only learned how to count whole amounts, or what we call whole numbers, which is the set of numbers you get if you start with zero and then count by ones, one, two, three, four, and so on. But there are things besides whole amounts. It's possible to have just part of something, like just part of an apple. And that means there are in-between amounts. You might have one apple or two apples, but you could also have something in between that like one and a half apples. How can the base 10 number system handle situations like that? The answer is decimal places. Wait a second. Decimal places counting in between numbers? I thought fractions counted in between numbers. Let's watch to see if we can clarify this. Decimal places are a way of extending the base 10 number system so that it can represent amounts that are in between whole amounts. Decimal places are just like regular number places, except that instead of using them to count groups, we use them to count parts or fractions of things. Oh, of course. Decimals count fractions. Well, that makes sense. Let's keep watching. To see how the base 10 system is extended with decimal places, let's look at the pattern of number places that we saw in the last video. We started out with a number place for counting things one at a time. And when we hit the limit of counting with it, we used another number place on the left side of it for counting groups of 10. By combining those two number places, we could count from zero all the way up to 99. But when we needed to count beyond that, we used another number place on the left side of it for counting groups of 100. And when those places were maxed out, we added a place for counting by groups of 1,000, and then by groups of 10,000, and so on. See the pattern? Each time we added a new number place, it was located to the left of the previous one. And each time, it represented groups that were 10 times larger than the previous group. Since the amounts that our number places represent get bigger and bigger as we go to the left, it makes sense that number places for counting smaller amounts, like parts of something that are less than one, will need to go on the right side of the ones place. That's where the decimal places are found. And, just like the whole number places can go on forever to the left, counting bigger and bigger groups, the decimal number places can go on forever to the right, counting smaller and smaller parts, or fractions. But, if number places go on forever, in either direction, then how do we know which place is which? I mean, if they all look the same, or worse, if they're invisible, then how do we know which digit goes in which place? Ah, that's an excellent question. We do have a problem now that number places can extend in both directions. Before, when we had only whole number places that extended in just one direction, to the left, we knew that the place that was furthest to the right was always the ones place. 
But now, we know that number places can extend in both directions. So we need a new way to tell which place is which. What we need is a point of reference. A point of reference. That's like saying, hey, you're at the beach, right? And you look out and you say, hey, do you see that boat? Look at the nubble light. And then look just to the right of the nubble light. Do you see that boat out there on the horizon? Well, in that situation, the nubble light is your point of reference. It's the point you're using to refer to something else. What do you think the point of reference is when we talk about place value? Let's see if you're right. A place that we always start from. And for that, we use a special symbol called the decimal point, which in the United States looks just like a period. Did you guess decimal point? Well, that's what it is. Basically, the decimal point acts as a separator. It separates the number places that are used for counting whole values, which are on the left side of the decimal point, from the number places that are used to count fractional values, which are on the right side of the decimal point. And that's why you don't see a decimal point in every number. If there's no decimal digits in a number, like in the whole number, 25, then you don't need to show the decimal point. It's safe to assume that the digit farthest to the right is in the ones place. Of course, you could still show the decimal point if you wanted to, since it's always immediately to the right of the ones place. But if there's no decimal digits, then we don't need to separate them from the whole number digits. If a number does have decimal digits, then we call it a decimal number. And the decimal point helps us quickly recognize which digit is in the ones place. For example, if you see a sequence of digits like this, 1, 2, 6, point, 5, 3, you can tell right away that the digit 6 is in the ones place because it's immediately to the left of the decimal point. The ones place is always, always and forever, immediately to the left of the decimal point. Think about it. If it wasn't, then the decimal point couldn't act as a point of reference because you'd never know what was to the left or right. It has to be the same place value every single time. And that place value to the left of the decimal is always the ones place. That means this two is in the tens place and this one is in the hundreds place. Okay, but what about the digits that are to the right of the decimal point? We know that they must be in decimal number places. But what are the names of those decimal number places and what values do they count? Well, looking back at our number place pattern, we see that each time we move to the left, the new number place counts amounts that are 10 times bigger than the previous place. So each time we move to the right, that place should count amounts that are 10 times smaller than the previous place. Since the ones place counts by ones, the number place to the right of it should count by amounts that are 10 times smaller than one. The amount that's 10 times smaller than one is called a tenth. It's the amount you get if you take one whole, like one whole apple, and divide it into 10 equal parts keeping just one of them. One tenth is what we call a fraction. And fractions are written using a special notation that has two numbers with a line between them. The number on the bottom tells how many equal parts a whole amount is divided into. And the top number tells you how many of those parts you have. Now let's keep paying extra careful attention here because the practice work you're gonna do later includes problems where you're given a digit in a place value and you have to write down the fraction that it equals. So let's keep watching and learning. So the fraction 1 tenth is written like this, 1 over 10. Getting back to our apple counting example, previously we could only count whole apples. But now that we have a number place for counting tenths, we can count tenths of apples too. We can use the ones place and the tenths place together to count amounts that are in between a whole number of apples. To see how it works, Let's start our counting with one whole apple and no tenths. That means that there will be a one in the ones place and a zero in the tenths place. But now, let's start adding tenths to that. For each tenth that we count, we increase the digit in the tenths place by one. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four, five. Let's pause for a second to notice something important. Do you see that having five tenths of an apple is the same as having one half of an apple? That's because five is exactly half of ten. And the fraction 5 over 10 can be simplified to 1 over 2. That's why having 1.5 apples is the same as having 1 and a half apples. Pretty, pretty cool, huh? Let's stop there for a second. Forevermore, if you don't already know this fact, learn it now. 5 tenths or something 0.5 or something and 5 tenths 
is always going to equal one half. Anyway, back to counting. Six tenths, seven, eight, and nine tenths. Now we have one whole apple and also nine tenths of an apple. But our tenths place is maxed out with the digit nine. That's as high as it can count. So what do you think will happen if we add one more tenth? What do you think will happen? Answer that now. Yep, those ten tenths combine to form one whole apple, and that will cause our ones place digit to increase to a two. We now have two whole apples. Even though one is made up from slices, the amount is still equal to one whole. See how decimal digits help us count in between whole amounts? But wait, there's more. Or decimal number places, that is. The tenth place allows us to count in between the ones. But what if we want to count amounts that are in between the tenths? The decimal number places keep on going to the right, and each time they count amounts that are ten times smaller than the previous amount. So, if the tenths place counts fractions that are a tenth of one, then the next number place over will count amounts that are one tenth of a tenth. One tenth of a tenth is called one hundredth, and it's the fraction you get if you take a tenth and then divide it into ten equal parts. It's a very small fraction, and it's called a hundredth because it's the same fraction you'd get if you take a whole and divide it up into a hundred parts. So its fraction form looks like this, one over one hundred. Just like tenths could be used to represent amounts that are in between the ones, hundredths can be used to represent amounts that are in between tenths. The hundredth because it's the same fraction you'd get if you take a whole and divide it up into a hundred parts. So its fraction form looks like this, one over 100. Just like tenths could be used to represent amounts that are in between the ones, hundredths can be used to represent amounts that are in between tenths. And just like if you combine 10 tenths, they equal one. If you combine 10 hundredths, they equal a tenth. And the decimal number places keep on going like that. The next number place over represents fractions that are one tenth of one hundredth. That very small fraction is called one thousandth because it would take a thousand of them to make one whole. And let's stop there for a second. So we're clear. All you're responsible for learning now are those three decimal place values that Rob has just spoken about. The tenths, the hundredths, and the thousandths. What he talks about next will only be part of our challenge work. And the next place over is 10 times smaller than that. It's called the 10 thousandths place. And then there's a hundred thousandths place. There's a millionths place and so on. So do you see how truly amazing our number system is? It can represent any whole number amount, no matter how big, by adding bigger and bigger number places to the left. But it can also represent amounts in between those whole amounts with more and more precision down to the tiniest fraction imaginable by adding more and more decimal number places to the right. <laughs> that is truly amazing. In fact, it kind of makes my head hurt just thinking about it. Of course, could be this doggone pot I wear in my head all the time. <laughs> okay, so now that you know how decimal places work, let's talk briefly about how we can show their place value and how we can write decimal numbers in expanded form. And that will be tomorrow's lesson. But for now, Let's practice naming and identifying decimal place values. And why not throw in some whole number place value review? Let's do this.